In the last lecture, we implemented the sign of functionality in our Angular application. So now, from our Angular application, any user can go ahead and register himself and that user will be created in the Firebase server. Now, when making a sign up request, we might also get some error. So in this lecture, we are going to handle those errors. But before we do that, what I also want is, I want to show a loading indicator in the UI whenever a sign up request is sent and before we receive the response. So let's first go ahead and let's do that. So let me close these files. We don't need it for now. And here, if I go to dashboard component, so here we have our dashboard component. There we are already displaying a loading indicator using this div. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate component for this loading indicator. So inside this app folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call it utility. So any utility component, we are going to keep it inside this utility folder. Let me go ahead and let me open terminal. And here, let's first move to this utility folder. For that, we are going to use cd command. And from the source folder, we want to go to app folder. In the app folder, we have created this utility folder. And there, we want to create a new component. For that, we can use this ng generate command. And we want to generate a component. And I'm going to call this component loader. Okay. Now, we have this error because if you see in this project, we have two module files. So here we also need to specify which module file do we want to use. So here we can say hyphen hyphen module and we want to use app module. All right, that component is created. Now, if I expand this utility folder, there you will see we also have this loader component. Now, currently we don't need this spec.ts file. So I'll simply go ahead and delete it. Let's open loader component.html. And let me also open dashboard component.html. So from here, I am going to copy this div and I'm going to paste it inside this loader component.html. And here I'm not going to use this ng if directive on this. Let's save this file. And now let's open dashboard component.css and from there let's copy this CSS for displaying the loading indicator. So for that, we have this CSS. So let's copy these two. Okay. And let's open loader component.css and let's paste it there. And let's save it. Okay. Now, all we are going to do is in the dashboard component, instead of using this div, now we are going to use loader component. So here, let's say app loader, right? Because for this loader component, if you see the selector is app loader. So we are using the selector of that component inside the dashboard component. And on this app loader, we are going to use ng if directive. And to that, we are going to assign is loading. So if this is loading is true, then only we want to show this app loader. All right. Now we are going to use the same app loader in our login component also. So let me close this file. Let me also close this file. Let's go to login component. Let's go to login component.html. And here inside this div, we have this form. And before this form, I'm going to use loading indicator. For that, I'm going to use its selector app loader. All right. And in the login component.ts also, I'm going to create one more property. I'm going to call it is loading, which is going to be a Boolean value. And initially it is going to be false. And I'm going to use this is loading property in order to display or hide this loading indicator, this app loader. So again, we'll use ng if directive. And to that we will assign is loading. Now, when do we want to set this is loading to true? Okay, it should be is loading. Let's change the name here as well. Okay, so 
we want to set this is loading to true once the request is sent so here inside this on form submitted method from there we are going to make a post request in order to sign up the user so before we send that request we are going to set this loading indicator so for that we will say this dot is loading to true okay and once we have the response or once some error has occurred so inside this function so this next function will be called once we have the response so once we have the response we want to hide the loading indicator so here i will set it to false also if some error occurs while making the request at that time also we want to hide the loading indicator so here also let's set it to false all right now when this loading indicator will be displayed at that time we don't want to show this form at that time we want to hide this form so here for that again we are going to use ng if directive and to that we are going to assign is loading now we want to display this form when is loading is false so on this is loading we are going to use the not operator okay so if the request is sent at that time we want to show the leading indicator but we don't want to show the form and once we have received the response we want to show the form we don't want to show the loading indicator let's save the changes here let's go to our application and there for now let me close this developer console there let me try to create a new user so again i will try to create a new user using johnsmith at gmail.com okay now we already have a user with this email id so it should not create that user and we also need to switch to register mode and now when i click on the sign up button you see a loading indicator is being displayed here and after that some error has occurred so that user will not get created because with that user id with that email we already have a user so an error has occurred and after that that loading indicator is hidden and we can see the form here now if i try to create a new user for example mary jane at gmail.com and let's specify some password and when i click on the sign up you see it was showing the loading indicator and in the firebase we should also have that user created so now you can see we have two users so this loading indicator is working as expected now the next thing is we want to handle errors in our application so if i try to create a new user with an email id which already exists in that case we are going to get an error also if i go to firebase here this documentation and there we have selected sign up with email and password there if i scroll down you will see that what type of errors can occur while making a request to that api so these are the common error codes these are the common errors which can happen while making a request to the sign up api so we are going to handle these errors now how we are going to handle these errors we are going to handle these errors by showing a snag bar with the error message so let's go back to vs code again and in the dashboard component again if i open the dashboard component there we have also some html and css for showing the snag bar so this div here it is basically showing the snag bar so again what we are going to do is we are going to create a new component so for that let's say ng generate component and i am going to call this component snag bar all right again we need to use hyphen hyphen module and we need to specify that we want to create this component for app module okay that component is also created inside this utility folder so here we have the loader and here we have the snack bar from there again i am going to delete this file and let me close this loader component.html loader component.css login component we want to keep and let me open dashboard component.html from there i am going to copy this div and let's open snag component.html and let's paste it there so we want to show the error message here okay now inside the snag bar component.ts let's go ahead and let's create an input property so for that i'm going to use this input decorator 
and to use this input decorator we need to import it from angular slash go and let's create this error message property okay it is going to be of type string or null so either it is going to store a string value or it will be null and initially let's set it to null all right now let's also copy the css for that snack bar so again let's open dashboard component.css and if we scroll down we can see the css for snack bar all right so let's copy till here and let's go to snack bar component.css and let's paste it there right let's save the changes let's close this file this css file let's also close this login component.ts for now and let's also close this login component.html for now okay let's save the changes in this file also in this file now i'm going to remove this ng if from here this we will add in the parent component let's only keep till here and now let's get the selector of the snack bar so it is app snack bar let's copy this let's go to dashboard component.html and there now instead of using this div i want to use that component okay now here we also need to specify the error message so i am going to bind error message property here actually let me copy that property name so that we don't misspell anything and to this we are going to assign this error message property all right and also we only want to display the snack bar if the error message has some value if it is null in that case we don't want to show this snack bar so i'm also going to copy this ng if statement from here and let's add it here and now we can go ahead and we can remove this div okay we are going to do the same thing in the login component so let's save this dashboard component.html let's close it and let's open login component.html there after this app loader or maybe before this app loader let's use app snack bar okay now in the login component we don't have any error message property so what i'm going to do is in the login component.ts let's create a property let's call it error or let's call it error message again it is going to be of type string or it can also be null okay and initially let's set it to null and we are going to use this error message property in the login component.html so here what we want to do is we want to display this snack bar first of all we want to set the error message property of this snack bar component to this error message property of login component so in this snack bar component we have this input property called error message that we want to assign with the error message property of login component and we also and we only want to display the snack bar only if error message has some value so here let's also write that ng if statement and if this error message it has some value then only we want to display the snack bar okay with this let's save the changes now when we are going to set this error message property of this login component so we are going to set this error message property of this login component whenever some error occurs while signing up the user so while signing up the user if any error occurs this error callback function will be called in that error callback function i am going to say this dot error message equals err dot message okay or for now let's simply say some error occurred then what we are also going to do is after three seconds we are going to set this error message to null so we already have that logic written inside the dashboard component so if you scroll down here we have this set timeout function 
let's copy this and let's go to login component ts there let's paste it so after three seconds we are setting this error message back to null because after three seconds we want to hide the snack bar right let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here let's try to sign up a user with an existing email so for example john smith at gmail.com and then let's specify some password and when i click on this sign up button we should see this snack bar some error occurred for three seconds and after that it is gone now as we learned when making a post request to sign up url we might face these errors so email does not exist or operation not allowed or too many attempts try letter for that what i'm going to do is let's go to vs code and here let's create a function and i'm going to call this function set error message okay and this error message here we are going to receive the error object let me close this terminal and instead of doing it like this what i will do is let's go to our auth service so let me save this file login component.ts let me close this dashboard component file let's also close login component.html for now and snack bar files all right and here i'm going to open the auth service okay so from here we are going to return an observable basically the response which this post method will return us and it is going to be an observable on that we can use the catch error operator so we learned about catch error operator in our previous section so the same thing we are going to do here we are going to use catch error operator and to use this catch error operator we also need to import it from rxjs and here we need to pass a callback function okay and in here what we are going to do is first of all we are going to call throw error and again in order to use this throw error we need to import it from rxjs so when we use this throw error it is going to return us an observable which is going to contain the error data so from this function from the sign up function we want to return an observable right that's why we are calling this throw error function here because this throw error it is going to return us an observable and in that observable it is going to return us the error object so for now let's simply pass this error okay and here you can see that it is striked out that's because the syntax has changed a little bit so here we need to pass a callback function which will throw this error now here we are going to write a switch statement and in the switch statement we are going to check for error message so when the firebase returns us an error there we are going to have the error object so in the error object so this is the error object which is going to store the firebase error in that we are going to have another error object and in there we are going to have another error object and in that error object we will have a message property and this message property is going to store the error code so this error codes which you see here it will be stored in that message property so if the error code is email exists let's check for that so here we are going to add some case statements so let's add the first case and here let's check for email exists and if the email exists what we want to do is here let's create an error property and it is going to be of type string or null so basically it is going to be the error message and initially let's set it to null so what we want to do is if the email exists at that time we want to set this dot error to this email already exists okay then we can also have a second case before that let's break from here then we can have a second case where we can check for another error for example this operation not allowed and if this is the error code in that case we will set this dot error to some meaningful error message like 
this operation is not allowed something like this so in this way you can write multiple cases for different types of errors which you want to handle now here before we check this condition see this condition is valid for firebase errors so in the firebase error object we will have an error object in that we will have another error object and there we will have the message property but if the error is of type something else for example a network error in that case this format will not be valid there so before checking for this we also want to check if the error contains the error object or here let's say if the error does not contain the error object or if the error dot error does not contain the error object so this is the condition we want to check only if the error contains the error object and in that error object also we have the error object then only we want to execute this switch statement otherwise if it does not have that we simply want to return or what we will do is we will simply create an error message variable here with some default error so here let's simply say an unknown error has occurred okay and here let's also use the let keyword okay so if this condition satisfies in that case we are going to throw an error so for that i'll simply say throw error and there we need to pass a callback function and which error do we want to throw here we want to throw this error message okay and in this case we don't need this error property which we have created here so i'll remove this and here we are simply going to set the error message if we reach to the switch statement so instead of saying this dot error let's simply set that error message and here if we make to the switch statement so here we have added some cases and we are setting this error message so here instead of throwing this original error we are going to throw this error message and we also need to use a return keyword here okay because this throw error it is going to return us an observable and we want to return that observable from this function same thing we need to do here and now let's save this file and now let's go to login component so let's go to login component.ts and there when the error occurs here now we are not going to receive any error object we are going to receive the error message so what we are going to do is let's simply name it as error msg okay and i'm going to remove this console.log statement from here and here i'm going to set this error message to that error message which we are going to receive okay and what i'll also do is i'll cut this statement from here and i'll create a function i'll simply call it as hide snack bar and there let's write that logic and let's simply call this hide snack bar and we need to access it using this keyword okay let's save the changes and now let's test this functionality so what we are going to do is we'll try to create a user with an existing email so let's first go to registration mode there i'm going to use john smith at gmail.com email address and let's specify some password now with this email we already have a user so if i try to sign up you can see that now we are getting a custom error message this email already exists so in this way we are handling any error which can happen while making a post request to the sign up url this is all from this lecture in the next lecture we are going to implement the login functionality for our application